is initialized to zero. Now you calculate a, uh, I mean, a Q value for any X sum. Now the formula is what? Now this is the formula you both don't bother about. We just remember that Q matrix. What is Q matrix basically? The Q matrix acts as a memory. Whatever it, uh, the agent has learned to the experience. So Q matrix updating means it is updating its memory. It's learning. And in future exploration, it will make use of this uh, knowledge. So uh, whenever a state uh, for A is the current state and action A is taken, so the Q value is what? Its current reward value, I mean from state A to action, whatever reward value. And what is its consequent effect? That means the Q for next state, I mean, when I'm one state taking an action come over here, now this, what are the possibilities? What are the scope? So next all state, I mean all actions. So next state and all actions. So this is method. It should be clear from the graphical representation. Here, suppose, what does it like to mean? This, I, 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 this is not developed. Suppose this point is that an agent initially at room one, an agent is at room number one. Now, if you see the uh, R matrix, because from the room, you have developed the uh, graph and they've developed the uh, R matrix. Now, now you see your agent is at initially at room number one. So if you see R matrix, from there you can see that from room number one, this is minus one, minus one. So room number one is not directly connected to zero. Room number one is not directly connected with uh, one. So this is all minus one. Room number one is connected with three. This is connected with three. So one, uh, if somebody is in room one, so agent can go room number three or agent can go room number five. Room number five, right? Now, uh, after this, any path can take in. So, uh, so room number, I mean, agent from room number one either can go to three or either can go to five. Let's say five. There is no such things that there is 100 reward or something like that because there is, it, it has to explode the vital energy. Suppose it takes five. Now, what is this Q value? The Q value one five is equal to what? The what's the reward value for this X sign? So this one, and I take some initial, uh, some value of gamma, let's say point in. And that basically exploration and exploration. Now, maximum Q, uh, so after coming, that means when agent takes an X sign from one to five, you have to explore that after five, what are the possibilities of exploring for the agent? So from five, one can go to one or five to four or five to five. So you calculate the Q value of all these possibilities and then maximum. Now, if you see your Q matrix, your Q matrix has all value zero. This I am updating. Actually, initially this value is zero. So all these values are zero. So it basically 100. So this gives the Q value of one five is 100. So this I am updating. So this is updated, right? Next, you consider, suppose you are somehow in room number three, initial state is three, agent is exploring. Now initial uh, state is three, so you just see the uh, R, R, so your R says, R matrix says, from three, all these value negative, so from three to one can go room number one, room number two, and room number four. So from three, room number one, room number two, to room number four, and take say, uh, agent, go to room number one so from three, so agent is in room number three he can go to one or two or four let's say he goes to room number one now if it goes to one then what is the consequent uh, step it can take i mean action three or five so the q value of three one means r value of three and one and point a maximum q one three one five and Q13, Q15, you will see, so uh, R31, R31, if you see the R31, R31 is zero. So put this value zero, then point A, and you have already developed that 15, Q15 is 100, so use that 100, so it gives 80. So now I'm updating my 80. Now you see that after coming over one, the agent cannot stop, because agent target is to reach five. So from one, what he can go? Room number one, he can go either three and five, Let's say again, it takes five. It can take also three, there is no problem. So by taking five, I mean, what is subsequent action it can take? One, four, and five, right? So one, four, and five. So by that way, Q, one, five, once we calculate, so this is R15 and point A, uh, point A, then Q of five, one, five, four, and five, five. So Q of five, one, five, four, five, five, all are zero, so it is. But you see, this is 100, we have already calculated. So agent has already updated this. I mean, it says that it is 
100 it has so it again following different path but it come back to the same reward value so q15 uh, earlier we see in another initial state it gives me 100 now from other initial state we may explore the q value of 15 remain the same 100 so by this way it updates the q value okay so with this last couple of minutes, I don't know, maybe uh, I don't know how many, uh, how much. So maybe another five, ten uh, minutes, ten minutes. I will just talk about the application of this. Uh, Hello. Yes. Hello. Hey, any madam, to this much. Hello. And the whole area circle, to this much. Hello. Okay. So with this key, uh, key learning and reinforcement learning, now we talk, uh, take help of some uh, solution of this, uh, I mean, uh, solution in uh, the problem of uh, multi hub routing problem of cognitive radio network. Now, you know that 5G is a buzzword in telecommunications. 5G means there are huge number of nodes, billions of nodes to be connected. That are in so when there is nodes are connected, then when they like to communicate, there is a spectrum required. <laughs> means the spectrum scarcity is a problem and that we need to address. So in 5G, there is a spectrum scarcity problem. Now, what are our current uh, spectrum allocation policies by the government? That the spectrum band, say for example, FM radio, it broadcasts has certain bandwidth. Some other application has certain bandwidth. So it is static allocation. So some bandwidth are leads to some uh, customers or some service provider. So it is static allocation process, policy. That means spectrum is licensed to some user. That user is called primary users. Say for this 88 megahertz to this FM radio. So this is primary user. Now, when you see that this static mode of spectrum allocation is actually causes underutilization. Most of the time, the spectrum is given to some user or some licensed user, but this user are not using. So what is there? It is underutilization. So in one sense, we are feeling that there are spectrum scarcity problem, that there are lack of spectrum in because of different application like IoT and others and others. But other things are also seen that spectrum, because of this static allocation, this is underutilized. So how this problem can be addressed? Can we look for an opportunistic communication? Means we can explore radio environment. That means a node, when it likes to communicate, it will just sense, like your temperature humidity, it will sense the radio spectrum environment. And it will learn that whether the spectrum of particular user, I mean primary user or licensed user is currently being used or not. That means a secondary user, which is also called cognitive user, means a node, when it likes to communicate, it will just sense the radio environment. And if it finds that the spectrum is not currently being used by the primary user, it will communicate over this. There are other issues which work, the energy. The nodes are better given. All we know that we need to recharge frequently our devices, electronic devices and other. Because these are, uh, I mean, limited battery driven. Now in certain situation on unit network, when there is no possibility of frequent recharging or when you cannot replace your battery frequently, can we develop a scheme that harvesting of energy means this node, because there are lots of electromagnetic waves, can get charging. That's called energy harvesting. So energy is another issue. So we can look for harvesting, that means node network lifetime in, 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 increase, and we have to go for spectrum allocation. So cognitive radio is an intelligent communication in which a network or SCU learns about Q radio spectrum and makes an opportunistic transmission over the license spectrum. So here, if license spectrum P, it transmits data, otherwise harvest energy. So action depends what would be the consequent effect. So this is a typical what I am talking about here. We are uh, considering a wireless environment. This is a secondary network. This is secondary source. See, this is secondary and this is destination. Source like to communicate to the destination and there are lots of nodes which acts as a relay for covering longer distance. So how the path, routing path to be developed? See, unlike the computational problem, computational problem where the network they say mean path and all these, but here the physical channel of the path is very important because there are obstacles, there are mobility and all this. So the physical characteristics of the channel are also taken into consideration. That's called fitting. So considering all these issues, that how a secondary source can establish an optimal path such that the network, I mean, uh, energy efficiency. Energy efficiency means for a given path or given power, the node can transmit large amount of data or huge amount of data. So energy efficiency is data rate divided by power. For a given power, how much data can be done? And path setup should be so fast that 
it will delay will be less so this is our uh, i mean reward so if a path is set up in such a way that less power will uh, causes more data transmission and delay will also be less so what can be the operating framework that is a time frame the secondary or the cognitive load will sense whether it's primary transmitting or not say uh, learning from the environment and based on that if primary is transmitting okay secondary will not transmit because secondary cannot transmit because primary is now transmitting so secondary can harvest energy from primary transmission when primary is not transmitting secondary can transmit opportunistically go for transmit opportunistic data transmission so if we consider this problem as a multi hop routing problem as a rm problem we will have n to n relay uh, i mean um, since it is a relay based communication we will be looking for some form of uh, reliable data transmission means out a u not be there relay corresponds to one set action is linked from relay to relay i mean from movement from one relay to another relay reward is weighted sum of energy efficiency and delay and spectrum is the environment policy is what to be the routing strategy such that that in to end means the reliable data transmission should be there and two reward maximization means weighted sum of energy efficiency and delay to be there so uh, why we will be applying here this qrlp because from one relay to another relay physical characteristics of the link is very random it doesn't know so we do not have the associated transition probabilities and uh, end to end delay would to be less so we explore the q learning techniques because of the lack of transition probabilities because of the randomness in the wireless channel we do not have the transition probability associated so we are looking for uh, uh, q learning approaches so as i already told the delay is what the total trans uh, i mean bit uh, i mean m number of bit and uh, r bit is the per second so this is my delay parameter and this is the energy efficiency so my reward is weighted sum lambda uh, normalization of energy and this one see energy maximize i like to say maximization means for less power i'm going to maximize of this but as delay to be minimum so that's why subtracted so this is basically my reward function and this is the q routing network framework i like to finish because the uh, i think uh, another 2 3 minutes i will finish uh, madam can i take 3 4 minutes yes sir yes okay so uh, my objective here is to develop this reward and we will have a go for uh, routing policy so maximizing this reward so uh, for end to end outage is my uh, target minimization of this is my target or goal i'm max, uh, minimizing that and under this constraint so this is the routing algorithm and of course when i'm looking for a uh, uh, routing technique the topology of the network has a very important role uh, so what kind of topology whether it is a key like structure topology or whether it is a grid structure like topology so this topology has a consequent effect for path setup and associated complexity because when it is fully connected it definitely you can expect the complexity is very large so fully connected network we have the routing worst case uh, situation is uh, like this and for rectangular like grid we have the uh, and square grid like we have this one and when we have looking for it that means same number of relays uh, or placement if we go for a kind of tree structure like network the complexity is like this so whatever we find that outage probability in terms of time uh, i mean uh, sensing duration we will have this kind of result i think this is less important okay the same problem we can think other way also instead of uh, we can have the other objective instead of end to end reliable data transmission we can make okay i am happy with certain reliable data transmission but i like to establish routing such that each node can have more residual power i mean residual energy that means relay is a feature gets energy more so some of the relay power so when i am establishing a path from source to destination my now objective changes instead of reliable data transmission i am looking for okay certain reliable data transmission is good enough but how can i set up the path such that the residual energy of the network i mean all load should be maximized so uh, similar kind of framework so energy harvesting is done and then it is doing some form of cooperation and this is it's a typical emergency application situation when cognitive radio has to explode uh, so uh, again this kind of environment is something radio spectrum policy is routing strategy environment is wireless goal is some residual energy maximization means i like to enhance state of life channel instead of uh, outage minimization i mean end to end energy transmission so this is shown that when this q learning techniques is used we have the uh i mean network lifetime economy now of course another issue 
that uh, convergence of the Q routing. That's an important issue. Uh, intuitively, you see there are finite number of states, MDB process, finite number of states, finite number of axons. Then the discount factor is also 0.5, 20 bounded. Learning parameter is also. Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, this convergence, and that is shown through simulation that with this reiteration, there is a convergence. So, so that's much. Uh, these are the, some of the references. Uh, thank you so much. It's finished. I think uh, it's okay. I take two minutes extra. Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, if there is any question, uh, any question related to this uh, at all. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, I think there's no question coming. If uh, you're having questions, uh, you can mail me some. Yeah. If there are questions. So, chat box, I can't see any questions. Participants, if you have any questions, you can put it in your uh, chat box or you can put your phone and ask question. Yeah, I think there is no question. Yes, sir. Okay. So, thank you once again, sir. And we will end uh, this. Thank you, thank you uh, ma'am. Thank you, organizer, for giving me scope uh, uh, for delivering this lecture. Okay. Uh, I think I can uh, make some association like this way. Uh, uh, to the audience, participant. Actually, truly uh, speaking, I'm not a uh, man of uh, that way, the machine learning or the artificial intelligence or something like that. So, when organizer, uh, just to link my uh, talk with respect to the topic I uh, discussed. So, uh, when they ask me, organizer asks me to deliver a talk, I was avoiding. I mean, uh, so my first network was GAN network, no? Generative net, I mean, uh, sensing network and the reconstruction network and then discriminator network. So I was trying that uh, not to. I saw, okay, I told them, okay, if there is a requirement of uh, expert and others, I can provide you like that way. But uh, they are trying to recon I mean, uh, reconstruction networks. So they were asking me, and so then I agreed. Uh, okay, I take this problem like that way. Okay, uh, can I make this situation so that the audience who are discriminated network can discriminate or not? I mean, fake or real. So yeah, my success or failure depends on if you can uh, discriminate fake or real one. I mean, in the domain or like that. So when I agree, then I thought, okay, mm, uh, well, I will take this uh, lecture in the last part of, the, I mean, last day. So I have uh, scope of listening all other talks and like that way. So I have more uh, scope of exploring this environment and learn, and that's the reinforcement learning. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much. It just uh, uh, thank you, madam. Thank you. Sharing uh, your uh, whatever there was in your mind. So thank you for that also. And so for the participants, we will just wait for uh, up to yeah. eleven fifteen, and the next session will be starting to eleven fifteen. Okay, madam, I'm leaving. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Okay.
আচ্ছা স্ক্রিন ইজ ভিজিবল আর ইটস কামিং প্রপারলি is now in full screen mode
so we have come to the second session of day 5 and this session will be delivered by uh, sheikh rafiul islam uh, he is an industry person and now he is an assistant professor of ai labs dcg data core system india private limited he will be delivering on the topic deep learning for computer vision a journey from scratch to implementation so for real life use case and uh, he is finishing his phd in compressed sensing signal processing utilizing deep learning framework from iies in shipur under the supervision of professor shanti mahati and padmashri professor ajay kumar ray his major work or research experience includes artificial intelligence and machine learning especially deep learning he has more than 10 years uh, work experience in the software industry and as well as the academic institutes namely modern software service private limited bangalore neotia institute of technology management and science kolkata and the neotia university kolkata presently he is working as an assistant professor in the ai lab academy of such vertical of dcg that is data core system private limited kolkata he has published more than 10 journals and papers at national or international level now i will request sir to start uh, the session thank you ma'am uh, for this wonderful introduction Uh, so as the session is mainly hands on so before uh, going to the program so i will take only maximum 10 minutes time to explain convolution and pooling operations that is basically required to understand the networks i will implement through my hands on experiment so in the first step i will take a very common example uh, that most of you may work with and in the second half i will try to explain and i will show you everything every steps how covid non covid images can be classified so as uh, for the both cases we will use convolution pooling those are the operations we used in convolutional neural network based deep learning framework so we need to understand this uh, especially uh, when you talk about the size or dimensions after uh, pooling or convolution operations that's you need to understand unless and until you understand those things you won't able to understand coding how a model can be implemented in coding so for example say we are having of six images nothing but six number of rows six number of columns and if you notice this image this is basically a binary one so you can consider as a two dimensional matrix now in convolution operation we have kernel so kernel can have any dimension any shape so mostly we use square like shape it can be 3 cross 3 5 cross 5 mostly we use in odd numbers either 3 cross 3 5 cross 5 or 7 cross 7 so say we are having this kernel here and now when this convolution operation will take place means this kernel will be used will be converted with this input image and after that we will have some output so how that output will be computed so you can assume that that kernel is exactly placed over there and perform element wise multiplication and addition so if you notice this matrix so this black colored digits are coming from this original image and this portion is nothing but the sub portion of the image and if you see this violet colored digits are the coefficient values of this kernels 
So now element wise multiplication is taking place. And after that, we will compute addition. And that will be the, after adding, we are getting three, that will be the output of this position. So when the kernel, you assume that over here, you will have after multi element wise multiplication and addition, you will have this value. Now, to compute the next value, next output, you need to shift that kernel from here to next position. And in that case, we need to define some stride, whether it is one, two, three. So it depends on you how you are addressing the problem. So if stride is one, stride is one means after one column, just again this window will appear here. Means we will consider this portion to calculate this value. So in this way, you can move this window, that means this kernel over this image, and again come down by one the row, and again calculate, you will have this activations map. Suppose we are having another kernel. So another activation map will be at the output. So if you notice this, we have only one image that is black and white. Number of channel is one. We have used two number of kernels here and there after performing convolution operations, we obtained two number of activation maps. Uh, rather, I would say this is basically as a whole, we say that activation map. Number of channel of this activation map is two here. That is equal to number of kernel you use. So what will happen if you use color image? So for color image, as you all know that there is three number of channels. So whenever you want to make convolution operation using a kernel, kernel must have three number of channels. So this is the first kernel of first filter. We have three number of kernels, three number of channels. So each and every channel will operate on this color image respectively. In the similar fashion that already I have explained for the previous one. So again, if we use another, as a result, we will have activation map and activation map again, will have only one channel because we are using one filter. So don't get confused with the number of channel of the input image and the number of channels of the output activation map. You can, Always remember in this way that number of filter is equal to number of activations map. Now, suppose we have another filter. So we will have another activation function, activation map there. Your audio broken. No audio is coming. All of the making presenter.
Sorry for the inconvenience, we are trying to connect you.